pleasure of welcoming you back to um, New Bowls 2022 award ceremony. And as you can see, it's a beautiful day, so I'm praying and hoping that you will enjoy the ceremony today. But before we start um, the ceremony, there are a few essential information that I believe you should know so that you can enjoy yourselves whilst you are on campus today. I didn't have this announce, this information on my list, but I'm going, that's the first thing I'm going to say, and that is if you have a, a child who might cry, I'm pleading with you during the ceremony, especially when the awards are being conferred, I will ask you to take them out, all right, so that we can concentrate on the graduates. All right. Um, I think most of you might know, especially the students, um, we are live streaming this ceremony. So if you want your families to join in it, this is the time to probably, especially um, those who have the streaming link, or if you go onto our website or our Facebook, if you direct them to our Facebook, you'll be able to join in the ceremony. Um, I think one of the important things that we try as much as possible to let you know is where the toilets are. Um, so today, if you need the toilet, just go through the doors behind you. <laughs> All right, and when you get out there, you turn right and you go through another two double doors onto a corridor. You'll find the ladies' toilets on your immediate right. Continue down to the end of the corridor. And when you look um, heading towards the exit, you'll find the, late, the gentlemen's toilets and the disabled toilets. All right, if you can't find it, we have some ushers out there um, that you can ask, but they are also clearly marked, so you will not miss it. Now, whilst you are here, in case you need medical attention or you need first aid, please head out there and speak to one of the ushers and they will be able to help you. Um, we don't have fire drill scheduled for today, so in case the alarm goes, I'm going to ask you to calmly go through, those who are here go through these doors, those who are at the back go through that door, and when you get onto the corridor, just look for the fire exit signs and make sure that you get to the front of this building. That's where we'll be meeting. We have people who are trained to guide you and I will um, ask you to listen to them, listen to, to their instructions so that you know what to do. Um, I believe that most of you have this. I have mine. I'm going to also ask you to put it on silence or vibrate mode so that it doesn't disturb the ceremony when the program starts. Um, finally, any other concerns you may have, again, just go to the ushers or you can come to me and I will help you. I pray that you'll be blessed by the ceremony today. And now we are going to wait as the graduates and the lecturers march in. Thank you very much.
can be seated. Dr. Daniel Duda, the worshipful, the mayor of the borough of Bracknell Forest, Councillor Ankur Shiv Bandari, Madam Mayores Rishi Bandari, Dr. Stephen Coro, academic staff, colleagues, distinguished guests, people watching online, and least but not last, graduates. Welcome to the award ceremony of 2022. No? I'm delighted to see you all this morning. Finally, a lot of people, colors, everything. You, you look beautiful, all of you. And the setting of Salisbury Hall also is very beautiful, so welcome. To all of you guys, I offer my warmest congratulations on your academic successes. The culminations of many years of dedication and hard work, especially during a couple of years of exceptional uncertainty and challenges. I would like to acknowledge and thank everyone that made today possible. It is probably impossible to name everyone, especially as I would not want to forget someone. But, I, but you all know who you are. And for this, I thank you. A couple of changes in the program. You probably noticed that the music came from the speakers rather than the musicians. Unfortunately, some of our musicians were not able to come due to COVID. So we want to wish them well. Also, Dr. Patrick Johnson was also supposed to have the launch of his new book after the ceremony, but he too is not able to come here. But the Stambro Press bookshop set up uh, in, uh, at, the, at the end of the corridor. Um, so please don't forget to go over there and grab some books. And, uh, uh, but, and, but do it after the ceremony, right? But anyway, without any further ado, I welcome Dr. Stephen Coro, principal of the college, for his remarks. never do anything by memory, I'll ask Marcel to come for the invocation. Thank you, Serena. Can I please invite you all to stand as we pray together? Dear God, thank you for inviting us into your presence this morning. It is a place where worship and praise were born to live. This, today is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today we rejoice with our daughters and sons, with our fathers and mothers, our brothers and sisters, our friends and colleagues because they have arrived, they have completed, they have achieved, and they can take their place amongst those who finished. For these reasons and many more, we rejoice in you for giving us today. Today we are glad and we celebrate the perseverance, the metal, the sacrifices made, the desire to learn and the ability to start and complete their ac academic endeavors. For these and many other reasons, we are glad and celebrate today, the day you made for us. However, we are also mindful that we would not have been, we would not have made today if it were not for yesterday. So we remember the colleagues who are part of this journey but are not here with us today. We are grateful for their friendship, the memories made together, the impact they made on our lives and those around them. We remember and give you thanks for the difference they made in our lives. We remember the teaching and administrative staff members, both present and past, 
They shaped the thinking, the choices, and therefore the lives of many here today. They gave of themselves yesterday for us to become who we are today. They modeled life values and what it means to follow God's calling, and that remains an inspiration for many of us. We remember and give you thanks for their dedication, hard work, and commitment to learning, teaching, and managing to shape our lives. Today, we remember our family members, our parents for sacrificing so we can learn, our spouses for their support and long suffering with us during the long nights and days of study, our children and extended family for their encouragement and the many together moments foregone for us to study, we remember them and we give you thanks for placing us in their lives and them in ours. Today we remember the many organizations which make our learning possible, the missions, the conferences, the unions and the division leadership for their commitment, foresight and sacrifice to invest in young leaders. We remember their investment for us to be here today and give you thanks for them. We remember the many changes made during our studies in the past number of years. Today's college is no longer yesterday's college. And while this is always true, it is even more so in 2022. The changes made yesterday in order to shape and to sharpen the vision, to secure the future and adapt to an ever-changing world took a lot of courage and commitment. However, it also brought about heartache and heartbreak. We remember in prayer those who impact, who, those impacted by those changes, and we give you thanks for them. Every end also marks a new beginning, and today we also look ahead to tomorrow, and we do so with trust in you. The one who was with us through these many experiences yesterday remains committed to being with us tomorrow. We look to you with trust, Trust in you, the one who began his good work in us yesterday and will complete it tomorrow. We look ahead in trust to tomorrow, to the one whose nature, character, and purpose does not change and remains the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We choose to trust in you as we look ahead to tomorrow. Strengthen our trust, we pray. We look to tomorrow as we seek wisdom, for the current administration and the teachers. Grant them wisdom to discern between that which is of you and that which is of us. Grant them wisdom to discern between the important and the nice to haves. Grant them wisdom to discern when to let go and when to go forward. We seek wisdom for the graduates and those who are considering studying in the future. Grant them wisdom to discern your choice from the many others. Grant them wisdom to, 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 to discern your will and purpose for their lives, your call to a life of service and sacrifice. And lastly, as we look to tomorrow, give us a heart of compassion for one another and the people you choose to place in our lives, for the world around us for whom you gave yourself. Dear God, please accept our prayer as we remember and give you thanks for yesterday, as we rejoice and celebrate today, and as we look forward with trust, seeking wisdom, and a heart of compassion for tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, graduates. This is the day to commemorate the completion of your study. The awards ceremony is a very special event in the annual calendar of Newbold College of Higher Education. It's so good to see so many of you here today. I know a number of you have travelled across Europe to be here today. And as Serena has said, it's so great to see you in person, much better than two-dimensional on a screen, even in high resolution. But it's really great that we can be here to celebrate this time. And to celebrate with you, I also want to add my welcome to the official dignitaries that are here. 
the Worshipful Mayor of the Bracknell Borough, uh, sorry, the Borough of Bracknell Forest, Councillor Anko Bandari, and the Mayoress, Rishi Bandari. I also want to welcome the Chair of the Board of Governors, Dr. Daniel Duda, members of the governing body who I know are here, and of course, parents, spouses, friends, and family of the graduates. As the recently appointed principal, I welcome you all to today's award ceremony. Last year, I understand, Newbold hosted a virtual ceremony. With the return to physical ceremonies for the graduation of this academic year, graduates of the last two years have also been invited to attend. And that's the practice of a number of places. A number of us were down at the University of Wales, Trinity St David in uh, Lampeter on Friday, and they had a large group there who had come from the 2020 group and the 2021 group and now the 2022 graduates. The last academic year was a year to recover from COVID. While continuing the delivery of our academic programs in a hybrid format, it was great to welcome students onto the campus and I believe those that came together had a great year. We look forward to that number increasing in the next academic year, and we look forward to that dynamic being even richer. Like many universities throughout the United Kingdom, not only has there been the COVID challenge to address, but also the post-Brexit norm to be developed. For a regional institution like Newbold, this is a challenge that we are still navigating. It's also been a year of transition this was the first academic year after the restructuring, and I want to thank all staff that have continued to work with me and my predecessors to implement this process. I'd especially like to acknowledge the achievements of one of our contract lecturers, Dr. Daryl Gungadu, hiding over in that corner. Daryl recently defended a PhD from Stanford University, and we want to congratulate him on that. <laughs> During the year, there have been a number of changes. We've had a new chair of governors just been appointed, and Daniel, I know you know Newbold well, you taught here as a lecturer for seven years. You've been on the governing body for 17 years. And we now welcome you as chair of the governing body of Newbold College of Higher Education. I'd also like to take, to take the time to express appreciation for the former chair of the governing body, Pastor Rafat Kamal, who served in this role for over seven years. And I'd like to just remember that the challenges that the last governing body have managed in the last couple of years have been significant, and we thank him for his leadership during that time. Of significance, I also want to thank five staff who have retired in the last academic year. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Dr John Bailden. John, you've served here for over 40 years, and as one of your graduates and one of the members of the governing body said, Newbold is John, John is Newbold. It almost seems that way. It's hard to believe that it's over 20 years since I first started working with you, and I appreciate the contribution you have made over those many years. I would also like to acknowledge Dr. Aliki Nakala, who is a, was a principal lecturer in Old Testament who has uh, retired. And we have uh, Mr. Pear Lisley, who is our librarian. And thank you, Pear, for what you have done over the many years. Is it 37 or something that you were here? Not quite. 31, okay. A little bit of... Uh... <laughs> and Linda, I'd also like to thank you for your contribution to the library 
over a long period of time as well. I will stop guessing numbers. But it's, it's well in excess of, uh, I would say, 23 years or so, maybe 25. And I just want to pause there for a moment. I have worked at a number of academic institutions. And I want to tell you that the service that Pear and Linda have provided to Newbold has been outstanding. I don't know of another library at the institutions that I have worked at that have had the sort of calibre, the anticipation, the ability to be proactive in trying to make sure we have the best resources. So a special thanks to Pear and Linda for those years of quality service. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Radisha Antic, who was the director of the Ellen White Research Centre for many years, and he retired also during this last academic year. We've also had a number of our academic staff and uh, some long-term professional staff move on in the last 12 months. Some of them are still here today because they're still contributing as contract lecturers, but Gifford, I'd like to acknowledge your time and presence as uh, a contribution to Newbold over many years, and we really appreciate the contribution you will continue to make, and we wish you well as you move into uh, your consultancy business and still become a huge fan and supporter of Newbold. I'd also like to acknowledge the contribution of Dr. Tom De Bruyne as a senior lecturer in New Testament for the years that he was here. I'd also like to acknowledge Pastor Julian Thompson, a lecturer in Old Testament, who, after a very short period of time, Julian, um, is moving away. But it's nice to have a friend in high places. And it's nice to know that you will continue to support Newbold in what you do as the editor of Stanborough Press and the editor of The Messenger. Also during this year, Ms Debbie McReynolds, the executive assistant to a number of principals, has also moved on to uh, another stage in her life. And uh, we wish Debbie well and thank her for her contribution as well. With that list, you wonder what's left. Well, actually, there's quite a little bit left. But there's also a number of new people who are coming. And we appreciate very much Nevena Borscht, who is actually going to be the new librarian and she's already starting to work with Pear and Linda in a handover, and we greatly appreciate what you're going to do. We're also appointing um, Pastor Ivana Mendez as the lecturer in Biblical Languages, Pastor Adrian Peck as the lecturer in Pastoral Studies, Pastor Rory M Mendez as the director-elect for the uh, Ellen White Research Centre, and we're currently waiting to finalise two other appointments, one in Biblical Studies and one in Pastoral Studies, and both of these appointments will have doctorates that will continue the high quality of education here. In terms of the academic program, you'll be aware that uh, at this point in time, um, our main academic uh, partner is the University of Wales, Trinity St David, but we are pleased to have a couple of graduates from Washington Adventist University joining us for the last couple of years. You will notice that uh, the Quality Assurance Agency has actually given uh, the University of Trinity St David, or sorry, Wales Trinity St David, a very uh, favourable review in their recent uh, uh, quality assurance review throughout this last academic year. Newbold in this last academic year has successfully recommenced the one year in mission program. A number of students come here, have a semester of study, and then they go out throughout Europe and beyond to engage in community service activities. They were a very enthusiastic, exciting group of students to have around to complement the really dedicated students that we've got here already. And we are planning that intake every year because we believe this is something important to the values of the institution. Next month, Newbold, in partnership with Adventist Chaplaincy Institute, is launching a clinical pastoral education program 
and we're grateful to be able to work with the Firmley Park Health Trust for the chaplaincy placements for this group of people. Next summer, we'll be uh, recommencing the Summer School of English. And currently, we're negotiating with a sister institution in Ukraine to provide academic support for their students. And we look forward to having some of them on campus in the near future. As you can imagine, the difficulty in contacting these students at this time and trying to finalise arrangements is still a great challenge. Work is also being done to explore other niche academic programs to expand Newbold's academic profile. And of course, the work on some of Newbold's infrastructure continues and uh, we look forward to seeing a little bit more development as we work with Bracknell Forest Council on uh, the restoration of Sylvia's Garden. I'd like to thank our academic and professional staff for your work throughout the year. It has been much appreciated. Thank you to the Board of Governors and the stakeholders for your strategy and ongoing support throughout this year. You too are, am are our ambassadors. Thank you to fa parents, family and friends who've st supported students throughout their study. But I also want to thank the graduates and students for choosing Newbold. We also want to thank, last but not least, our Heavenly Father for his leading, his protection and his influence in the lives of all of those associated with Newbold. As we look forward, I, along with the governing body, the senior leadership team, the lecturers and professional staff, look forward to serving the students and community of Binfield and Bracknell in the new academic year. This morning, it's my honour to introduce to you the Worshipful Mayor of the Borough of Bracknell Forest, Councillor Anka Shiv Bandari. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Curran, for this kind introduction. Uh, Dr. Daniel Duda, uh, Ms. Serena Santona, for all the, you know, you made this possible for us to come here. Past Principal John Balladem, with whom I know the council has enjoyed many years of absolutely wonderful relationship. The parents, the families of the students, who of course made all of this possible and above all, the graduating students. This is an important occasion for the students, their parents, and also for the staff, when all the hard work over a period of time is culminating in today. I understand from Dr. Um, uh, Karo that a lot of you were in Lampeter only on Friday, and you know to be here today with all the energy and the smiles that we are seeing today is absolutely brilliant, so, so, so that is fantastic. The studies that you've done in the fields of uh, biblical and pastoral studies, theology and business, I hope will equip you to make a difference to society, whether in service of God or to an enterprise and, and, and overall. The relationship between Bracknell Bara and Newbold College goes back many years, and Newbold College has produced some outstanding citizens during this time. The work here is not only confined to education, but also plays an important part in the wider society of Bracknell. Thank you again to Dr. Karo. We arrived a little bit earlier, so he took the time, uh, even though, though he was really busy, to show us uh, around the campus. I have seen parts of the campus. I play badminton sometimes, and I can safely say that this is the best badminton court I have played in. I'm not a professional player, but, uh, but, but, but that, is, that is brilliant. But uh, Dr. Stephen uh, kind of showed us some other parts of, of, of the college which were absolutely beautiful. You know, he mentioned Sylvia's garden, and um, you know, I was happy to note that your daughter got married there uh, only last weekend, and I believe his son-in-law is one of the graduating students here, so I think all of this shows, you know, of course, the great work and, and the fantastic location that we have, but also the feeling of family. When, when we came, you know, I saw a, a potentially a young mother, I think if I'm correct in my assumption, 
who was uh, holding a small child and trying to solace, and this young mother was in, in the in the graduate and gowns. So, so you know, it is it is I believe students, you know, with young families um, uh, also who are part of the society. So, you know, I what I see here, and when I see all these smiling faces, and I see a lot of different phones and cameras, you know, capturing each and every moment. I can see that sense of community, that sense of family, which is absolutely brilliant to see. In our relationship with uh, the Newbold College, I would like to also pay tribute to Dr. John, John Beltham. You know, I believe he's been at the college since 1982 and, and for the past many years as, as principal as well. You know, he's played many roles as, as uh, the chair of governors, I believe, at Garthil College and also SACRE, which is the Standing Advisory Council on Religious Education. I am myself a member on that. And with the challenges on faith that we see from different sources of society, I think the role of religious leaders on bodies like that is very important. And I'm thankful to uh, Dr. Bildam for having played a role on that. Um, as we move forward and as Dr. Uh, Stephen Karo takes charge, you know, I wish him all the best and my best wishes to everyone here for, for a fantastic future. All the best. Thank you. Now it's time for a musical item. It will be a special moment because David, one of our graduates, that David Kazek, please come. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll play for us with his mother, Estila. And uh, so let's take a moment to enjoy what a wonderful world.
Good morning, uh, Mayor, Councillor Bandari, Principal Dr. Curro, graduates, colleagues, or former colleagues, I should now say, family members and friends, and anyone I might inadvertently have omitted. I'm pleased to introduce our guest speaker for this occasion, and will attempt not to regurgitate what has already been expressed so eloquently in today's printed program. To read out Mrs. Lorraine MacDonald's impressive CV would take longer than the time allotted for this introduction. So I will be selective. Although the clock is still at GMT rather than British summertime. <laughs> Mrs. MacDonald was elected on the 3rd of February this year as Education Director for the British Union Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thus. She is also ex officio a governor of Newbold College of Higher Education. Hailing from Tamworth in Staffordshire, Mrs. MacDonald has served as a teacher across the spectrum of key stages in primary and secondary education, also working in further education as well as in the postgraduate sector. She has experience in IT lecturing and examining, the prevent duty, school improvement, safeguarding, inclusion, special educational needs, and governance. A firm believer in Christian education, she has worked across multi-academy trusts, providing senior leadership capacity as well as managing and developing staff, and she has also brought her operational and managerial skills to bear in the corporate sector. Welcome, Lorraine, to Newbold's 2022 awards ceremony. We very much look forward to your words of encouragement, not only to our graduating students, but also to the college's committed and dedicated staff. Welcome. Good afternoon. I think it's, oh no, we're still in mourning. Um, first of all, I would like to just recognize the Worshipful Mayor of the Borough of Bracknell Forest, um, Dr. Steve Currow and uh, Dr. Daniel Dudar, and all the academic staff here at Newbold and all the other guests that are here. But most of all, I would like to say good afternoon and welcome to our graduating class of 2022. <coughs> it's both a privilege and a daunting task to be asked to address such a special class of graduates. Most of you are hoping soon to be ministers of the gospel and some of you will be entering into the world of business. And though having taught at all levels of education, right through to higher education, as essentially a primary school practitioner and leader, I'm more accustomed to speaking to year six pupils. <laughs> year six pupils who are entering the big wide world of secondary education, where they cease being the big fish in a little pond to becoming the smaller fish in a very large pond. You too are entering a new chapter of your career. Interestingly, I struggled to think about what I might say today. Why? Well, 
when you are, you are asked to write a speech or to make a presentation, you start to think about your audience and what the message might be. Who is the message primarily directed to? And then it struck me, I'm not too sure who I'm speaking to, not because I don't know who you are or what your name is, but rather I wasn't sure what category to place you in. As leaders, are you, as leaders of a flock or leaders of, of business, are you sheep or shepherds? And so my message, my thought today, is speaking about sheep and shepherds. In the church, we speak of the clergy and the laity, but then 1 Peter 2, uh, verses 45, tells us that we are all part of the holy priesthood. Then there's the paid and the unpaid ministers, and the debate continues to be held by those who would seek to excuse themselves from getting involved. Who should really be doing the work of spreading the gospel? Isn't it the, what ministers get paid to do? Who should be the administrators of our work? Should it be the business leaders or the theology graduates? The most intriguing distinction, though, I thought, has to be sheep and or shepherd. Am I speaking to sheep today or am I speaking to shepherds? How do you regard yourself in this very moment? Well, you say, we're not yet ordained, perhaps for some of you, and yet, yet working in the field. So therefore, we can't call ourselves shepherds. But when you eventually go into the gospel ministry and become leaders in the business world, and wake up in the mornings or go down to sleep at night for that matter, how will you, as ministers or pastors, evangelists or Bible workers, Te um, teachers and leaders regard yourselves. Are you sheep or are you shepherds? It is interesting to note that the Bible speaks more about sheep, I think, than it does about shepherds. Though Exodus, uh, though Ezekiel 34 speaks a lot about poor shepherds. When you stand up to address the brethren as their pastor, as, your te as the team leader, you are indeed shepherds. Shepherds lead the flock through thick and thin, good times and bad, ups and downs. Your flock may be large or small. It still takes the same kind of servant-like and transformational leadership to direct sheep who have a mind of their own. Like many shepherds of old, you must shepherd the flock with your rod and staff in hand. With your rod like David, you will lead the flock to still waters and green pastures towards the gate of the eternal sheepfold, the city of God. Sometimes situations will call for you to seek out that sheep that looks as though they're strained and use the crook of the rod to gently pull them back into the fold before they become the lost sheep. The expectation will be that when the sheep do get lost, that you will make every effort to seek them. At other times, you'll be like Moses and use that rod to part, to part many red seas of trouble as the sheep struggle with one another, whether it be within the body of God or their own individual families. Yet still in different scenarios, you'll be like Nehemiah, building the walls of the city, when your rod will become a sword you hold in one hand and a literal trowel in the other hand as you calm the friction between the building committee and the rest of the church. There will surely be plenty Sambalats and Tobias and Gishams ready to lure you off to some board meeting or committee of some sort to distract and dishearten you from the main task that God has called you to. But as a shepherd, you'll be expected to lead and be the master of everything and be on call 24-7. As a very experienced and occupational workaholic who fell into the trap of believing what Breen Brown has aptly concluded, we live in a culture that rewards exhaustion as a status symbol 
and connects productivity to self-worth. Do not bow to that idol. I was sharply reminded by an article in the ministry magazine years ago that there's only one saviour of the world and he's already done the task. Jesus, the main shepherd, had five leadership habits. He would go away and take moments of solitude. Forty days after he fed the 5,000, after the death of John the Baptist, he would leave the crowd and take stock. And you will need to develop that, that habit. Prayer will be the next habit you'll need to develop. Like Jesus, the great shepherd, you must take time to speak to the Father. Prayer should be your first response and never your last resort. Jesus had the habit, he knew the scriptures, and you will need to know the word intimately in order to impart the word. It was A.W. Tozer that said, what you believe about God is the most important thing about you. What we believe about God affects how we deal with life and its challenges. The beliefs in your heart set your why, the why in your leadership. The word of God will help you to keep remembering why God chose you to be a shepherd leader. Jesus had a small group. I was interested to learn that in the pastoral field, where you will absorb the most hurt from broken people and wounded sheep, expected to counsel, there is no intentional supervisor. I hope you understand what I mean by having supervision. Even Jesus had a small inner group on which to lean. You will need someone to lean, need someone to lean on when you have your difficult moments. You will need someone to whom you can offload and who will tell you the truth about yourself in love. This can't be your partner. He or she is too close to you and needs to remain your shoulder to cry on without being expected to guide you. Neither can it be another minister or leader in, in uh, your team who may be experiencing the same issues. All those who work in the counselling profession, and uh, myself even as a leader in education, we were expected to have supervisors. You will need one too. And this is a discussion I've already started with the Union Ministerial Secretary. You must be able to park the hurts that you will absorb of others in order to operate at your optimum. And then lastly, Jesus' habit, last, uh, habit was that he believed in the, the unconditional love of the Father. Jesus believed in the unconditional love of his Father. When the world seems to be in opposition to you, you need to remember that the Father accepts you as you are, flaws and all. And make time then to go to the foot of the cross. There the ground is level and we all stand as equals. We all stand as sheep in need of a shepherd. When you stand at the foot of the cross, you are reminded that you as sheep need yourselves to be led and to be fed. It's easy when in shepherd mode to ignore your own self in order to feed the sheep. God has indeed called you to feed his sheep, but like the advice given on flights to parents, put on your seatbelt first before putting on another's. The great shepherd ensured he was fed. You must go to green pastures and feed on the word and constantly drink of the water of life. As sheep, you need to know that the great, shepherd, the, the great shepherd's voice, John 10 tells us, my sheep hear my voice. What have you been hearing the shepherd say to you? Do you recognize his voice? Sheep sometimes end up on, the, on their back and struggle to turn themselves over. If not turned over, they become vulnerable to prey or just starve to death. When you get turned over onto your back, you'll need the shepherd, the shepherd, to turn you back over. As a shepherd, you, you have been called, like Peter, by God to feed his sheep. And as shepherd, you are an equipper, teaching, training, guiding, directing the sheep to the fold. However, it is as sheep you have been called to make sheep. 
You may have heard the, ad the adage said many times that it is sheep that make sheep, not shepherds. Jesus became like one of us in order to save us. Many a times you will have to be sheep in order to save sheep. How will you measure your success as a sheep or a shepherd? Jesus was both sheep and shepherd. He was the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. He was the Passover lamb by whom we are all redeemed. And yet he was and is the shepherd that was smitten for the sheep. He remains the shepherd and bishop of our souls. To quote Anthony Wagner Smith, who I heard recently say this, success is not filling up the church on the seventh day of the week. Success is filling God's kingdom seven days of the week. Even as a business leader, your success will always be measured by the lives you have impacted. For good in this world, that is in short supply of good leaders. When all is said and done, and when you lay asleep at night, worried and wondering about the church that you cannot grow, that department that doesn't seem to be flourishing, instead of counting sheep, instead of counting sheep to go to sleep, just remember, you can always talk to the shepherd. May God bless you as you go on your journey, as you embark on this world of um, shepherding, whether it be in business or in the ministry of the gospel. Keep looking to the great shepherd as he guides you. Thank you. are muted. How many times we heard these things? It seems a word of the past now that we're learning how to live with COVID and things are going back to normal. However, if it, if it weren't for Zoom, last year we wouldn't have been able to um, have an award ceremony. We did it. We officially presented the students' names and their awards. But a virtual a war ceremony is not as exciting as being here all together, properly celebrate your academic achievements. So it is an honor for us to see students, some of them, not all could come, students that have graduated during 2020 and 2021. We wanted to, to see the faces march through the platform and properly being congratulated. In the interest of time though, and without meaning any disrespect, we will only call the names of the students that graduated. They are present here today. However, all the names of the students that graduated in 2020 and 21 are listed in the program. So, if you want to stand, the first, no, 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 just, they know who, David, the third line, everybody, thanks. So, I now present to you the names of the, of the students that graduated from the Department of Business and Humanity with a Bachelor of Science in Business Studies from Washington Adventist University in 2021. David Kezeg, cum laude. Teodora Ostojic.
we have to do a little bit of logistics. Um, I now invite Dr. Laszlo Galus to present the names of the students graduating from the Center of Ministry and Mission with a Bachelor with Honors in Biblical and Pastoral Studies in 2021. Caroline Lecoma. <laughs> Fitzroy Morris. Nicholas Ochiere. <laughs> and Samuel Semakula. Yeah. Dr. Laszlo will present now the names of the students awarded with a graduate diploma in Biblical and Pastoral Studies in 2020. Danny Aperadu. <laughs> Jairaj Kanakaraj. Dr. Galush now will present the names of the students awarded with a Master in Theology and Postgraduate Certificate in Ministry and Mission. Emmanuel Asamoah, with merit, also receiving the PG Cert in Ministry and Mission, with merit. Sergio de Souza. And Troy Smith. The PG Cert in Ministry and Mission. Class 2021, Emmanuel Asamoa, with merit, also receiving the PG Cert in Ministry and Mission with merit. Yes, yeah, so, so the next is Mohan Abadasari with merit. Clebson Braga. <laughs> Cornel Flace, with distinction, also receiving the PG cert with distinction. Nicole Gooden, also receiving a PG cert in ministry and mission with merit. <laughs> Lydia Hamlin, with distinction, also receiving the PG cert with distinction.
Mantas Kuchinkas, with distinction, also receiving the PG cert with merit. <laughs> Wilfred Messich, with merit, also receiving the PG cert in mission, mission with merit. Ilira Zapita, with distinction, also receiving a PG cert with distinction. And now we will have the presentation of the students graduating in 2022. Principal Dr. Stephen Curra, I am pleased to present those students who have completed in 2022 the requirements for the graduate diploma in Biblical and Pastoral Studies, the postgraduate certificate in Ministry and Mission, the postgraduate certificate in Theology, and for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts with Honors in Biblical and Pastoral Studies and the Masters of Arts in Theology. I invite Dr. Laszlo Gallus to call the names of the students by program. Filip Cekucin, in absentia. Silje Majholm, with distinction. Manlenkosi Mlambo. <laughs> Ugochuku Hope Njoku. Ronnie Odan with distinction in absentia. Lawrence Ofei with distinction. <laughs> Radoi Simeonov with distinction in absentia. Alexei Sinyushkin, with merit in absentia. And now we had the students who graduated with a Bachelor of Arts with honors in Biblical and Pastoral Studies. And the first one is Oliver Baich. Stephen George. <laughs> and and uh, Erhard Konrad Santo. The last student from this cohort is Christopher Tunem, with first in absentia. And now, students with a Master of Arts in Theology. Daniel Coffey Amachi, in absentia. Danny Apeadu, with merit, also receiving the PG cert in ministry and mission with merit.
Lara Canela, distinction. Thierry Mitchell de Royce, distinction in absentia. Allen Hajifendic, merit. <laughs> Jean Borhenter, merit in absentia. Stephen David Halbert, Merit. <laughs> Jairaj Kanakaraj, Distinction. Dan Mahadukan, Merit. <laughs> Japhet Edward Obese Amankwa, also receiving a PG cert in Ministry and Mission with Merit. Rimer Posma, Merit in absentia. Surin Rajavarapu, also receiving PG 13 Minister and Mission with Merit in absentia. Dorotea Relic Macedo, distinction in absentia. Felipe Rodriguez Lessa, Merit in absentia. Jesse Samuel, with Merit, also receiving the PG 13 Minister and Mission with Merit. Nick Vitalis, with merit, also receiving the PG cert in Miss and Mission with merit. <laughs> with the postgraduate certificate in Miss and Mission, Edward Boapong in absentia. Anton Torstensen with merit in absentia. And with a postgraduate certificate in theology, Ainsley Moloney in absentia. In absentia. Graduating students of 2020, 2021, and 2022. Today's award ceremony marks a turning point in your life. From this day forward, you will be facing new choices, new challenges, new opportunities. Newbold College has given you the best of its resources and skills. You have been brought to a greater understanding of the kingdom of God, its purposes, its causes, its promises, its hopes, and above it all, its King, Jesus Christ. I charge you to live the life of kingdom of God in this present world. I charge you to love God and your neighbor as your Lord commanded. Bind up those who you meet and who are wounded by sin and circumstance. Tell others of the days of God's grace and mercy in which we live. I charge you to remain open to the needs of other people. Respond to those needs with all the skills, dedication, and commitment that your alma mater represents. I charge you to make Jesus known through lips and heart, through witness and service. 
live the life of the kingdom, and be conscious always of Jesus Christ who loved you and he gave himself for you, sparing not himself, so that eternal life might be open to all. I ask you to stand up for the dedication prayer. Our gracious God, in this special moment, we want to dedicate these graduates to you. We are thankful for their past lives, for their family members, parents, spouses, children, and everybody who supported them, for the lecturers, past and present, for those who have been on the support staff and who made Newbold College to be what it is. And as they face new situations, new challenges in their lives, help them be conscious that you are always on their side, that you will bless them, you will go with them, and make them effective tools in your hands so that this world is a better place because of what you can do through them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Master of Ceremonies, Principal Dr. Karo, faculty members, distinguished guests, family members of the graduates, and finally, but not least, the new bold graduating class of 2022. Thank you for the opportunity to address my classmates. If there were one word or one phrase, rather, to describe our time at Newbold, I think it would be correct in saying it has been a journey. A journey that started for some of us two and a half years ago, others four, some six, and perhaps for some of you, you left and came back to complete your journey this year. However, irrespective of the journey, God has seen it fit that we are here today. For many of us graduating in this class, we were unfortunate enough to join Newbold during the pandemic. However, we were fortunate enough to actually fulfill our classes online. When starting New Bold, if I'm honest, I didn't know what to expect. However, with time, I met some wonderful people, and through weekly group work and conversations after class, I, ground, I um, gained a love for some people in this cohort. We've been charged and inspired to improve our study in various departments. These teachers and professors have equipped us with both the knowledge and the applicable skill to innovate in our area of study. In particular, my pastoral pathway, Dr. Gifford Ramey and Dr. Steve Caro have continued to stretch my mind, literally, and help me to see a broader perspective. But in as much as we celebrate our successes, it has not been without challenges. I'm acutely aware that many of us have suffered various challenges regarding family members, personal health, financial difficulties, and academic challenges, wondering if we would or even should finish this journey. Not to mention assignments from two or three lecturers at the same time <laughs> that would have you up late at night, sweating just so you can get the work done by 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. However, wherever your journey takes you, I pray that God has led you there. And today stands as a signifier that despite the challenges we have faced, God is still in the midst of this journey. The skills you have developed, the positive habits and connections that you have formed, keep them close and continue to serve. In my former school, there was a saying, enter to learn and depart to serve. I charge you with the same uh, charge, serve with humility, serve with grace, and serve with the power that God has given us. May God bless you on your journey. Amen. Buongiorno. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Lara, and as you may notice, I'm Italian. 
And today I'm honored to uh, talk to you about a remarkable matter that is the Student Artship Fund. It is, it is a privilege uh, to have been given the task of standing up here to inform you about this thing. It is a fund dedicated to help students going through financial difficulties or trying to balance studies and work so they keep on supporting their families or coming from divisions other than the trans-European division, unable to access any sponsorship. This fund is a concrete way to support students in their studies and their calling to serve their communities and spheres of influence. I feel deeply grateful for its existence since I have been amongst those who received help from this fund. The Student Hardship Fund granted me the possibility of completing my master here at Newbold. Newbold represents a place where my thoughts and my spiritual heart thrived. It has been a door opened into my future. In Proverbs 11:24 is written, sometimes you can become rich by being generous. It would be wonderful that many more students could have the privilege of being helped as I did. So, I encourage you now to take a minute, right now, yes, because I don't want to add a point on your to-do list, since we are all very busy, um, to become a bit richer by donating what you can in order to enrich other students' lives. So, you may have received an envelope in which you can write and uh, donate what you can. Surely, I, uh, I can guarantee this to you, helping their talents thrive may repay you even more in the future. So let's take this minute together. can leave anything um, with, uh, with the ushers. Now it's time to sing all together. You have the word of a hymn in your booklet, Be Thou My Vision. So I encourage you to, I invite you to stand and sing all together. Tihi. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, before we go outside and enjoy some refreshments and continue our celebrations, I would like to call upon the graduation benediction prayer. May God's blessing follow you as you find new journeys to travel. May you walk safely along the pathways of your dreams. May his gentle hand guide the decisions you will make and the passions that you follow. May your hearts and lives always reflect his love and truth. And may hope be a light within you that you can carry into each new day. Amen.